get a whiff of this. The New York Times has just hired a full-time fragrance critic. Why not? It's a $26 billion industry that touches virtually all of us. To find out just how important fragrance is, we went shopping with Chandler Burr, the new perfume editor of the New York Times. I'm Chandler Burr. I'm the first perfume critic of the New York Times. I'll be writing the column Sense Trip in T, which is the New York Times fashion magazine. I'm absolutely a fusion of art critic, and there's absolutely an aspect of that, and a science reporter. Perfume is the, uh, is the highest art that speaks to the sense of smell, just like cooking is the highest art that speaks to the sense of taste. There's substantivity, how long it lasts on skin. Diffusiveness, there's sillage, which is the trail you leave behind you. I think that innovation is incredibly important. I think that for perfume to be great, it has to be innovative. The choice in the scent, I think, is going to be your personality. It's like lightning. It strikes or it doesn't. There are ones that you wear, like a suit. Most of the Chanel feminines are like the Chanel clothes. They cloak you, but it's separate from you. I think that there are absolutely, you can absolutely draw a distinction between day scents and night scents. I completely disagree with the idea of masculine and feminine scents. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, you wear the perfume you want to wear. Gendering perfume into masculine and feminine is a pure marketing device meant to give straight men permission to wear fragrance. When I review in the New York Times, I tend to uh, concentrate almost entirely on the juice. I think the packaging is absolutely irrelevant to the scent. You're not wearing the packaging, you're wearing the scent. It's a little bit buyer beware. You need to wear a scent, you need to test drive a scent. I'm going to be trying to convey the beauty of this art. This is a legitimate art like painting or music. It should be appreciated on that level and it's something that you can wear at the same time. It's pretty cool. And here is Chandler Burr in person. Uh, how did you get into this business? A uh, complete fluke. I, was, uh, I have a master's degree in international economics and Japan studies. I was doing political reporting for U.S. News, and I was waiting in the Guardian Order to go to London to do a story, and I met a perfume freak, genius. And so, and then you just decided right then and there? It was, I, I, it was like being struck by it, lightning? It was weird. I wrote a book of scent. David Remnick read the book at The New Yorker. Daniel Zalewski, my editor, assigned me a piece uh, behind the scenes at Hermes for a year doing a piece on the creation of their perfume, and Hermes led me to Stefano Tonki at The New York Times. All right, so this is a story of certainly follow your passion. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you something. When people see perfume, we're going to test some of these, but it, it, it's, it's almost, is it like wine where some of the big wine, quote unquote, noses say, hey, it doesn't matter how much you pay for it, it's whether you like it? Because perfume, it almost seems like cost does equal quality. I, I think that cost does equal quality up to a certain point. There's actually something that's very interesting in the perfume industry, and until I started getting into it, nobody had ever said this. Perfumers will say something like, they front, they'll smell it, they say, oh, they front loaded all the money. You say, what does that mean? Well, it means that you are given a cost per formula. I got to say, and nobody talks about this, but when Dior and Donna Karen and Ralph Lauren make a perfume, they go to yeah. the perfumer, they say, we're going to give you $50 per pound for your scent, or they'll do it in kilo in, the, in Europe, uh, or 25 And it's going to be a huge difference because you're uh -huh. going to have a palette like this versus this. And what oh, they'll okay. do is they'll put all the expensive agreement, e ingredients up front, and the, the smell lasts until you're on the street after you paid for it. And then it goes into chemical bath. <laughs> All right. Let's test some of these. Right. And I want to start off with any one you want. Let's pick one that you love. Uh, one I love. Let's try Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana right there. That this one right here? Uh, yeah, okay. that's that. Light Blue, All Dolce right. & Gabbana. Now, to me, this smells... Uh, the way I described this was actually a very, very... I love that. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's very, it is very light and very blue. I described it as a lemon cake batter. Can you smell the flower, and there's almost sort of a powder, but it's a culinary powder. It's not like a face powder. Now, I have a big nose, but I couldn't pick all that up. Really? All right. <laughs> this one is great. Now, this is Cannabis Santal. This is pot. This is pot. This is the smell. But what's interesting is Fresh is the brand. It's an LVMH brand. Okay. It's not pot smoke. I hate the smell of pot smoke. I love this. It smells like, grab that, it smells like the leaf. That's that the is very unusual. Cut up. It's, cannabis, it's amazing. Cannabis Centaur. Can, cannabis Centaur. Cannabis Centaur. Centaur. Isn't that incredible? Yes, it is. That I one think is very. Beautiful. That one is very unusual. I have to say, this one was my favorite of the, so far. Okay. All right. Now let's do let's do one more that you like, and then and then the one that you despise. Well, why don't we do one? Here's a masculine. Here's Dior Um. 
Is that right. this one here? Yes. Okay, Dior Homme. Now, this also is an LVMH company. Grab mm -hmm. that's original because that's an iris marketed mm. for men. It's very masculine. Well, see, that's the interesting thing. Who would have thought of doing an iris for men? Not many people would do it. And it's genius. You shouldn't pay attention to the masculine and feminine. Wear what you like. That's gorgeous. You know Chanel 19 is an iris. Hmm. But it's a very, very different iris. It's a very cold, sort of stoic, elegant iris. And this is much more accessible, I think. All right, let's do the one that you hate here. All right, so the one I hate, Xenia. This is Z. And Black, basically, maybe because you hate it. Oh, right? <laughs> God, it's like funereal. Now, you tell me what you think. Now, to me, that's like being strapped in a closed room mm. with a motorcycle running in the heart of a chemical factory. Okay? What so are the, they doing? I don't, I don't love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go quite that far, but I don't have a nose like it, It's one of the masculine cliches. There are tons, mm -hmm. of, there's tons of stuff on the market, and they sort of think, you know, men are sort of dumb, and you have to sort of do the <laughs> lowest common denominator. But you don't, because the Orum is brilliant, and it's also for men. And men can wear perfume. Absolutely. All right, and that, I guess, is the bottom line. Chandler, thank you so much for coming in here. Thank you. And that is it. That's the scent of money, and that's Street Signs for today. We hope you enjoyed it. It's time now for the closing bell with Maria Bartiromo and Bob Pisani.